what is karma karma is one of those topics that many people know a little about but few understands the intricacies of it to start with newton's third law of motion states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction on the universal scale this is called the law of karma the law of karma basically states that every action has a reaction and whatever you do to others will later return to you furthermore ignorance of the law is no excuse we are still accountable for everything we do regardless of whether we understand it or not therefore the best thing is to learn how the law of karma works <clears throat> If everyone understood the law of karma we would all be living a happier life in a brighter world why because we could know how to adjust our lives so we will not be suffering the constant reactions of what we have done due to the false aims of life according to vedic literature karma is the law of cause and reaction for every action there is a cause as well as a reaction karma is produced by performing fruitive activities for bodily or mental development when we perform pious activities that will produce good reactions or good karma for future enjoyments or when we perform selfish or what some call sinful activities that will produce bad karma and suffering in future This follows a person wherever he or she goes in this life or in future life. Such karma as well as the type of consciousness a person develops establishes reaction that one must experience. The Swetashvatra Upanishad explains that the living being, the jiva, soul acquires many gross physical and subtle bodies due to the actions they perform. as is motivated by the material qualities to which he obtains these bodies are acquired continue to be a source of vision as long as he is ignorant of his real identity the brihad aranyaka upanishad further clarifies that as the atma or soul the gross and subtle bodies acts so thereby he obtains different conditions by acting saintly he becomes a saint and by acting immorally he becomes subject to the karmic consequences in this way he acquires piety or impiety accordingly similarly it is stated that as a man sows so shall he reap therefore as people live their present life they cultivate a particular type of consciousness by their thoughts and activities which may be good or bad this creates a person's karma this karma will direct us into our body by the most appropriate for the reaction that we need to endure or the lessons we need to learn thus because of our existence comes from the activities of our previous lives since everything is based on a cause it is one's karma that will determine one's situation such as race color sex or area of the world in which one will appear or whether one is born in a rich or poor family or be healthy or unhealthy etc so when the living being takes birth again they get a certain kind of body that is most suitable for the type of consciousness they have developed therefore According to the Padma Purana there are 84 lakh species of life each offering a particular class of body for whatever kind of desires and consequences the living being may have in this world in this way the living entity is a son of his past and the father of his future thus he is presently affected by his previous life activities and creates his future existence by the actions performed in this life 
a person will reincarnate to various forms of body that are most suitable for the living entity's consciousness, desire and for what he deserves. So the living being inevitably continues the cycle of birth and death and the consequences for his various good or bad activities as long as he is materially motivated. What creates good or bad karma is also the nature of intent behind the action. If one uses things selfishly or out of anger, greed, hate, revenge, etc., then the nature of the act is of darkness. One will incur bad karma from it that will later manifest as reversal in life, painful events, disease or accidents. While well, things that are done for the benefit of others out of kindness and love with no thought of written or for worshipping God and or acts of goodness and piety which will bring upliftment or good fortune to you. However, if you do something bad that happens because of an accident or mistake without the intent to do any harm to others, the karma is not so heavy. Maybe you were being an instrument in someone else's karma, which is also yours. It will take into consideration your motivation. Yet, the greater the intent of awareness of doing something wrong, the greater the degree of negative reactions there will be. So it is all based on the intent behind the actions. However, we should understand that essentially karma is for correcting a person, not for mere retribution of past deeds. The universe is based on compassion. Everyone has certain lessons and ways he must develop and the law of karma actually directs one in manner to do that. Nonetheless, one is not condemned to stay in this cycle of material or uh, repeated birth and death. There is a way out. In the human form, one can acquire the knowledge of spiritual realization and attain release from karma and further rounds of birth and death. This is considered to be the most important achievements one can accomplish in life. This is why every religion process in the world encourages people who want freedom from earthly existence not to hanker for material attachments or some sensual enjoyments which bind them to this world, but to work towards what can free them from further cycles of birth and death. All karma can be negated when one truly aspires to understand or realize the higher purpose in life and spiritual truth. When one reaches that point, his life can be truly spiritual which gives eternal freedom from change. By striving for the absolute truth or by serving God in devotional service, Especially in Bhakti Yoga, a person can reach this stage completely relieved of all karmic obstacles, all responsibilities. Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. Without being trained in this special science, it is very difficult to understand how the living entity leaves this body or what kind of body he will get in the future. And why there are various species of life which accommodate all living entities innumerable levels of consciousness. As related in the Bhagavad Gita, those who are spiritually ignorant cannot understand how living entity depart this body at the time of death, nor can they understand what kind of body he or she will enjoy while under the influence of moods of nature. However, one who has been trained in knowledge can perceive this. Thus, we encourage everyone to understand the law of karma 
more completely and how one can engage in the devotional service of the Lord in order to become free from all good or bad karmas and develop a purely spiritual consciousness. This is real freedom and liberation from all material limitations by which one can reach the spiritual strata. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.